Welcome to episode two of the Arctic Shores series. Now this is on the final challenge, how to crack the safe. This is the most talked about game from the game-based online testing that is Arctic Shores, used by companies such as PwC, KPMG, and HSBC. In this video, I'll be going through exactly how to succeed in this test, including the strategy and what skills it tests so you know what you're doing and you're not gonna be one of those people who is posting on the student room after this saying, I couldn't do the safe, help, I've lost my job. Right, so this is gonna help you how to crack the safe and how to properly succeed in this step. So first of all, just for people who don't know what the safe is, you've tuned into this video, um, it's the last stage of the Arctic Shores testing. And I'm gonna put a graphic on screen which I've made, which is sort of a visual representation of what it is. And in this game, this is how the safe operates. So you need, to, you need to punch in a number, it'll tell you what number you need to punch in. And basically the, the sort of a shaded area that's gonna spin around in a certain pattern, it might just go like that, or it might go dirt, dirt, it might be intermittent like that, or it might like swing in different directions like that. And it's gonna get harder and harder. So the first one is going really slowly, quite easy. And then by the end, it's going like that. And you basically have to time it. So it's all about timing, because you basically, when the number, when the shaded area goes over the number you want, you have to click the space bar to lock it in. And there's 20 of these numbers to lock in in order to crack the safe. And if you make one mistake, you have to go all the way back to the start, right? So that's how the safe works, in case you didn't know. So here's the common misconception from this safe game. And that is, I need to crack the safe. I've heard it a million times. Here's the thing, you don't need to crack the safe, all right? There you go, I've said it. You don't need to crack the safe. I know everyone says that, oh, I need to crack the safe or I've lost my job or whatever. You do not need to crack the safe. This is a common misconception and all it is is reading the wording from the question carefully, right? The first time I did this, I completely made a mistake. I got hung up on trying to crack the safe, but then I realized this isn't about cracking the safe. This is nothing to do with cracking the safe, all right? They don't care if you crack the safe or not. You need to read the wording carefully, all right? So the wording says that the aim of this game is to test that the safe is secure, okay? The wording, the question is not saying crack the safe. No one is saying crack the safe. The wording, I'll read it one more time for you. Test that the safe is secure. So what does that mean? What do you have to do? Basically, you need to test this safe enough times to be able to reasonably say that it could not be cracked. You understand? You're testing the safe is secure, so you need to be able to show that this test reasonably, like beyond reasonable doubt or whatever, this this safe cannot reasonably be, be cracked and is therefore secure. So if you're testing if it's secure and it is secure, you therefore can't crack it. So you don't need to try and crack it. So you now you now are on the same page, you understand what I'm saying? You have to prove the safe can't be reasonably broken into. So you're not gonna be able to break into it, okay? So if the aim of the game isn't to break into the safe, what do you do then to succeed in this game if you don't break into the safe? This game is testing, it's not reactions, it's not da -da 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 -da, click it at the right time when it comes it's around. It's testing resilience, patience, and working thoroughly. So the first thing it doesn't want you to do is it doesn't want you to do this twice and then because you failed it, you give up. Because the thing is with this task, there's no time limit. You can spend as much time on it as you want. There's no time limit. You just have to press exit when you're happy, right? And that means press exit when you're happy that you've tested that the safe is secure. So you gotta test when you're happy. You gotta press exit when you're happy that you believe the safe is secure. But what you don't wanna do is just do it twice or even do it once and then just be like, nah, I can't be bothered, exit this because it's so hard, right? Because that shows that you don't have resilience and you don't have patience, right? You just can't be bothered to, if you have a challenge, you can't be bothered to do it, to like really try harder and keep going and try and improve and all that. And then there's the other end of the spectrum. And I think this is probably what more people get caught up in because they're so worried about how to crack the safe. They basically spend too much time on it. So when I did it, I'm not going to lie, I probably spent half an hour on this because I did it, couldn't do it. Then I like called my friend. I'm like, bro, what is this? What am I supposed to do right now? Went back on it, did a couple of tries, probably went and got something to eat, came back and had more tries, see if I could do it. Um, and guess what? I didn't get the job when I did it that time. Um, and I've also heard stories of where people are doing it, can't do it. And they go like, oh, dad, can you do this? Dad has a go a couple of times. Then let's, um, let's wait till your brother gets home. Oh, your brother comes in, do it. Then, oh, let's get your sister to come do it. A whole family reunion or whatever just to do your Arctic Shores, crack the safe. And that is what you don't want to do as well because the com it's, 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 it's online testing. They, they record every single metric of how long it takes and whatever. 
you don't want them to like have in their algorithm or feedback sheet, I don't know how they do it, Excel document maybe. You don't want them to see 45 minutes on how long you've failed on this task. You don't want them to see, okay, he's done it five times and he's waited 20 minutes and he's done it five times and he's waited 20 minutes. And it's, it's even, you could go as deep as, because it's an algorithm, it's clever, AI, all that rubbish. I bet you it can probably test, it probably knows it's a different person, right? So you've been clicking it a few times, you tried five times, you wait five minutes, and then your dad or whatever starts having a go at it. To be honest, the algorithm probably knows just from like the way you're clicking it or whatever, that it's a different person. So if the algorithm basically picks up that you have someone else doing your Arctic Shorts, do you think they're really gonna want to employ you? Actually think about that. It's online testing that's supposed to be testing you to get the job and you've basically gone and got someone else to do it, which is effectively cheating. That's basically what it is. Um, and let's say the algorithm can pick up on that. You, they're, they're not going to employ someone who's cheating and untrustworthy, dishonest, whatever. So that's the other end of the spectrum. You don't want to, first of all, get like your whole family member going around having to go just to get it done. And you also don't want to spend 45 minutes on it, even if it was just you on your own, because it shows that you don't really have time management. Another skill in general is only doing a job when you're qualified to do it. That's just a skill in general. And basically, if you're doing this for 45 minutes, it doesn't show that you basically know that, um, because you're basically spending 45 minutes on something you can't do. Rather than doing it for a short time and basically realising, I really don't have the skills to do this, so I'm just going to pass on because in, in the working environment when you're working on something serious that's like a project that's going to affect the business if you don't have the skills to do it you don't want to be the kind of person who does it anyway does a really bad job and then the business is effective you want to be the person who looks at it and then you like accurately honestly assess do i have the skills for this if you don't you pass it to someone who has the skill set and they can move on right so that's the two things you that will really well three things really that won't look good if you spent 45 minutes. First of all, if you've passed it on to other people, it'll be able to detect and then dishonesty and straight out you're out. Another thing is time management. You're not really managing your time well. You're not valuing your own time if you're spending 45 minutes on this, which is obviously impossible. And the last one is it means you don't show the skill of knowing when something's the right task for you and knowing when it's an appropriate task that you're qualified to do, which is really important for the workplace because you don't want to be working on something you're not able to do. Because if it's health and safety related, it could be dangerous as well if you're making a mistake because you're not qualified to do it. So there's a sweet spot there really, which is where you have resilience and patience, but you're not completely wasting everyone's time. So I would say work on this for about 10 minutes, right? That's probably around the sweet spot. I mean, you can sort of gauge it yourself, do what you think would be good. But personally, I think 10 minutes is probably a good one. The strategy I used, uh, so obviously the first one, I just spent absolutely like half an hour on it and I failed it because I'd done it too much. The second time I also failed because I spent two minutes on it because I it was like, I know I can't do this, what's the point? But then the third time was when I realised it's not about cracking the safe, it's about showing patience and resilience. So basically, I basically started off slowly, just got a few in, and then basically got better and better. So I bet I purposely improved. So although, to be honest, I could get through to about fifth, because because if you do a lot, if you do did a lot of like video games sort of thing back in the day, you you can probably do this quite well. Um, so I could basically easily get to fifteen out of twenty straight away on one attempt. However, on this one, I sort of manufactured my improvement. So on the first one, I got like seven, and then I got nine, and then I got eleven, and then I got thirteen, and then fifteen, and then I got to sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and then that was about ten minutes it had gone, and then I stopped. And that was the one where I actually passed the Arctic shores. So I think either just work on it for 10 minutes or if you want to ma manufacture improvement, show that you can learn new skills and get better at things, then you can sort of show yourself on purpose getting better at this. So start off only getting five or so and then just get better and better and better. So you can choose either of those strategies, just whack it out for 10 to 15 minutes, probably just 10 minutes or you can manufacture your improvement. So there you go, that is how to crack the safe. And basically how to crack the safe is don't crack the safe. How to crack the safe is just have a good shot at it for 10 minutes so that you can reasonably argue. If you couldn't get into it in 10 minutes, then no one really can get into that one. It's a secure safe. And that's how you can pass that final one. So I hope this video has been helpful and has shed light on the safe challenge, which is probably one of the most talked about Arctic Shores challenges. I hope this video has helped. If it has given you any value and now you feel ready to conquer the safe, crack the safe in the Arctic Shores Challenge, 
feel free to leave a like i'd really appreciate that just to know that you like these videos and you're interested in me continuing with videos such as these the next two episodes in this series i'm going to do a next video is going to be analyzing my reports and that is basically going through the reports that arctic shore sent me so that i know how to improve and what areas i did well in so that i can show you how you need to approach these games in order to get the best uh, results and best personality traits and characteristics so you can get through to the next stage assessment center and interview and get the uh, job that you want and then the video after that is going to be how to practice arctic shores so i found a way to practice arctic shores if you're interested in that stay tuned for episode four of this series feel free to subscribe and then you're going to be notified when these videos come out hope this video has helped thanks very much yeah